I like this girl. Even though some of her story, well, some parts of it seem to change. I mean, maybe it's not important that she sometimes says she's 18 and sometimes says she's 20. She's obviously an elite member of Saudi society. Her dad is apparently a governor or something. No problem. She was in Thailand. That's a pretty good country. On her way to Australia. That's a pretty good country. They were already helping her out. It's pretty good. So it didn't really feel like a crisis. She was in a pretty comfy hotel. But this was a great opportunity for Christia Freeland. Certainly better than dealing with this news today. And this is the news of the day in the New York Times. China sentences a Canadian, Robert Lloyd Schellenberg, to death. He wasn't originally sentenced to death there, but they kicked it up a notch after Canada arrested Meng in uh, December. Let me read the first sentence from the New York Times. Ready? China's diplomatic clash with Canada escalated sharply on Monday, that's today, when a Chinese court sentenced a Canadian to death for a drug smuggling at a one-day <laughs> retrial ordered weeks after a Chinese executive's arrest in, China, in Canada. That's how they roll in China, a one-day retrial, a do-over in one day to kill a guy. I have no idea if he really is a drug dealer, but I do have an idea about Chinese courts. They are not independent. They're really just window dressing for whatever the Communist Party says. There are some lawyers in China, but they're really symbolic. The fix was in. Maybe he really was a drug dealer, but it's certain that this was an escalation. China is saying, you arrest one of ours, we kill one of yours. So that was the news that Christian Freeland was facing today. So why not scoop up a bounty, a prize, and make sure he, that she, <laughs> she hugs you, and make sure she doesn't say anything. Only you get to talk. Isn't that weird? Now, as I do my research for this video, Christy Freeland has yet to put out a public statement on the death sentence in China. Now, the last thing I see, and maybe this will change between when I speak this and when it goes um, to air, but the last thing I see on her Twitter feed is indeed about Thailand. You see that thing, that Thai Pongal thing there? Um, that's just typical political pandering to some Thai ethnic festival of some sort. Um, so I scrolled back a few days and uh, I saw nothing about this death sentence. I saw this tweet uh, by her a few days ago. Canada is seriously alarmed by today's court decision in Myanmar, that's Burma, to uphold the imprisonment of Reuters journalists Wa Lone and Kia So U. Now I'm sure that Wa Lone and Kia So U are good people. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure they've been mistreated. I mean, I'm not sure, but let's assume that. Uh, the problem is they're just, not they're just not Canadian. They have no connection to Canada. They, they work for Reuters, and so used to uh, Christy Freeland work for Reuters before she ran for office. So maybe this is a favor to her old company that, I don't know, that would be how the liberals work, but maybe she just really likes to virtue signal to show how much she cares to people about people, just not people she has any responsibility for or uh, can do anything about. I showed you the other day how Trudeau and Freeland literally made 10 public statements on Twitter about a Saudi national named Jamal Khashoggi who got into a fight between Qatar and Saudi Arabia and Turkey and the Saudis killed him, which is too bad. Uh, here's a picture of Khashoggi holding a rocket-propelled grenade launcher with the Taliban. So I'm not really surprised that his life ended in violence rather than uh, in old age. Um, there's no Canadian connection to Jamal Khashoggi. It's really none of our business, frankly. But uh, Freeland deeply cared. So did Trudeau. It's weird that way. Uh, a few weeks ago, this guy, scroll down, show his face. A few weeks ago, this guy became a Twitter airport celebrity too. Hassan al Kantar is his name. He was stuck in an airport in Malaysia. Again, like Thailand, Malaysia's not a terrible place. He's not a refugee. He left Syria in 2006 to go work in the United Arab Emirates in marketing. And his work visa expired, but he, but he stayed there anyways until they finally kicked him out and sent him to Malaysia this year. He wanted to go somewhere cool, like Ecuador, but, but he couldn't for whatever reason, so he just stayed at the airport in Malaysia and blogged about it, and he was really cool. And he didn't want to go back to Syria, even though the civil war there is over. And he's just some cool guy. And so Christian Freeland saw him on Twitter, and presto, saw him on Twitter, presto, he's not a refugee here, he's, uh, but he was brought here. He's, they turned him into a refugee, but he's a refugee from what? He hasn't even been in Syria in more than a decade. Why, did, why are we taking all these Twitter heroes from airports around the world. 
That's an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show. Every day, I do a video monologue, and then I interview an interesting guest, and then I end by reading my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at therebel.media slash shows.